Brent. <laughs> so, so Brent, where where do you call home? Which is kind of like a a a, a loaded phrase, right? Because I hate like when people say else? "Where are you from?" <laughs> right? I hate that. Yeah. Um, but why don't we? I would love why you're a watercolor artist mm -hmm. and. Tell me a little bit about why watercolor for you. Yeah, uh, I got into that. I kind of yeah ties with your question because I was traveling a lot mm. and um, with oils and stuff, it's a lot more difficult. But watercolor, you can just take a tiny pan and you know, and look like this. And yeah, like you can just do it anywhere. Um, so yeah, I was like, I guess I. Well, I, I'd done it in like high school and college some, but I never like too serious. And, and then when I was uh, in Russia, I started getting back into it a little mm -hmm. bit. Um, and then in Japan a lot more, I would just like sit in a place with like a little um, notebook and like mm -hmm. paint where I was. And that, that was kind of, um, yeah, I just enjoyed that process mm -hmm. and like um, just being in a place. And, like, yeah. The Japanese have a, traditional watercolor postcard thing there's its name yeah. for it you do you know that, what that's is? what i bought I don't, I don't, yeah I yeah <laughs> we, the last time i was there yeah. we we i booked like a airbnb experience with the artists and that's what okay. she does so there's i have to look it up there's like a okay. particular name for exactly what you're doing but watercolor on postcards and there's it's oh. kind of like this like you're in a place and then you paint the postcard and then you would like mail it to someone or something right so awesome. i just love like postcards yeah, and like yeah. that kind of thing that's that's what i i mean i bought that yeah the little <laughs> that, sets yeah, yeah. yeah there's a lot of stuff i bought in the art shops that i didn't know what it was and then like oh so yeah one more thing that I later <laughs> and they have really cool like water like pens with like fun brushes like yeah. brush um tips and stuff like that like the art yeah. stores over there are really yeah, I remember seeing like Amazing. five thousand dollar pens. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and you showed me one of those bamboo yeah. things. Did you get that in Japan? No, I, I ordered that here. Okay, um, so um, so the last time we talked, you were t you mentioned that you started doing art in high school, mm -hmm. and you've taken kind of breaks before, yeah. before high school. So yeah. you like yeah. you took some classes like classes in high school yeah. but a lot of kids don't have access to yeah. art right mm -hmm. and um hannah was ta i was talking to hannah yesterday and she said she was homeschooled so mm -hmm. she like did art on her own but then when she got more to like a formal high school um she had like more instruction so do you think that do you feel like you've been an artist like all your life yeah, probably. I was always drawing like dinosaurs and stuff. Yeah, and, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And, awesome. And that, then it started me. It, it it started me just drawing anime characters. Mm -hmm. And and then then I got into art classes. And okay. A little more fine arts. Right. Nice. And yeah. and you were saying that you have a minor in art history. Mm -hmm. Do you think that informs your work a lot? The art history. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Because some of the things yeah. that we were doing, yeah. like you're referencing, yeah, kind of especially my newer what i've been doing recently but i, I think mm -hmm. it always kind of has because even in um i was thinking i was thinking with my newer work is 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 very similar to what, what i had started in college or where i was going with it in college because i was taking because i'd been to italy at that time mm -hmm. and, and did a project with mannerist art and so after that i was doing i did this one i was in an etching class and I did this mm -hmm. one etching um based on Michelangelo's Last Judgment. Mm -hmm. um, and so I had all those figures around it, but <laughs> I'd had this dream that I got to heaven, but I, w <laughs> but I was blind there. Mm. Like, it was, it was kind of intense. Like, God had taken out my eyes. So I was mm. there, but I was just, like, blind. And so that was what this... So I, then I did a self-portrait in the middle of all these Renaissance mm. figures of uh, his Last Judgment. Um, and I feel like that's similar to the things I'm doing now because mm. it's all based on um a lot of renaissance compositions <laughs> compositions from other er eras of art history that's kind of like borrowing and putting the lines from that mm -hmm. into it mm -hmm. um so yeah I think that yeah <laughs> and but the those were kind of like I mean the renaissance was uh I mean you're probably more mm -hmm. uh knowledgeable of the renaissance than I am but I kind of think of it as like the exploration of you know learning more about science and mm -hmm. 
and kind of yeah. understanding form and mm-hmm. and the golden you know mm-hmm. triangle all that kind of stuff right yeah i mean i don't know when fibonacci was figuring things out but, but that's but like they, the they time that the, they're like figuring yeah. form and yeah, i don't know about fibonacci either but but they were all using the other yeah, golden ratio right which they got from the yeah Greeks and um and yeah so yes they're like science and mathematics and these harmonies that they're mm-hmm. discovering are like a big part of it and, yeah and i i think that those things that they were figuring out just kind of always work in, yeah in aesthetics and yeah so um so as someone who does art as something that is not necessarily like considered full-time right where Mm -hmm. it's as an emerging artist emerging could be 30 years of emerging (laughs) right Right, you know so (laughs) you've been traveling and you've been doing um a lot of art did the pandemic um force you to come back to the states so tell me a little bit more about why you decided to look for a residency yeah and have you done other residencies no no no. okay this was my first time yeah um yeah i was looking for uh a space to really focus on um i guess just deepening my art and figuring Mm -hmm. out really what i wanted to do with it because i I was like painting and things, but I didn't feel like I had the space and time to really get where I wanted to mm-hmm. with it. Um, to kind of take it to maybe a weird place where it's at now. Because, <laughs> mm-hmm. mm-hmm. um, you know, and, and I think when, when, I'm, when you're kind of living in like your daily life, you, you're kind of brought out of that mental space a lot. And, and here I was able to just like completely embody it. Like all, I mean, yeah. And even like, going out and like doing things around here you're mm-hmm. still like in a in the a similar mental space you know if I'm mm-hmm. going to the river or even chopping down bamboo it, it doesn't like bring me out of it so much as being like you know in a city with like you know, yeah people and, different, and daily routine daily and, routine and, mm-hmm. and things like that. it's hard um jared uh the guy that did the photographs that are in the other room that I've mentioned a couple times before Jeremy he had a dark room on the back porch yeah. and he was doing he kind of like created this dark room in his bathroom so it was kind of like the same thing like your daily routine and maybe mm-hmm. I'm creating art mm-hmm. but then I have to pack everything up because it's my bathroom right <laughs> um so yeah. yeah just having that space that's maybe not yours where it's like you're like floating into yeah. and we've been talking a lot about time here and how it like feels like right, really like right. flexible almost <laughs> like you can't really you don't know what day it is or what time it is and yeah. it's not necessarily a pandemic it's like it's just kind of the nature of yeah yeah and and i certainly got into a routine here that mm-hmm. i think was was really important for the work to just like have like a other uh, ry- rhythm to mm-hmm. it that I, that I got into every mm-hmm. day. Um, so yeah, I think, I think that was good. And nice. Kind of... So two months mm-hmm. and how do you think your goals from the beginning or even like months ago of like, I'm going to do this mm-hmm. and the process and then t- packing up. Yeah. Kind yeah. of just a short reflection of like, <laughs> did your yeah. did your work did your goals and yeah I think shift or I, I think I well I, I mean I think I achieved my goals and that the goal was just like I wanted to get my art into like an unknown mm-hmm. <laughs> space because I remember you asking questions a lot about like what what were my plans and goals and mm-hmm. I was like what? like it wasn't too concrete yeah you know um, that was kind of what it, what I wanted because I wanted it to go somewhere unknown which it did mm-hmm. <laughs> you know because me just because when I was just like thinking about it every day like mm-hmm. it took a, a lot of different turns so yeah it's it's changed like yeah completely from when I got here so yeah <laughs> I mean the first thing I saw you working on was the painting that you were doing of the towers from yeah. the yeah. photograph of in Georgia and this work is like (laughs) not (laughs) that at all (laughs) so that's really nice yeah 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 I I mean I still I still play like and enjoy that kind of stuff but that was kind of me just like okay I know how to do this and I need to just start making yeah okay yeah this photograph I'm just gonna 
get in. Paint it. And yeah, yeah, I had to get set yeah. up, figure out how I'm going to like, just like, just the kind of mundane, like, where am I going to put my paints? <laughs> <Where> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then it got cold. So yeah, we switched things around. Yeah, some so of your work got frozen, yeah, yeah. which is like water. <laughs> it's funny. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I mean, it did just take some time to just get like those practical matters. Yeah. Like set up. And that's why I think a two month time period yeah. is really beneficial, right? Because mm -hmm. it takes, you can't really do what you were doing in even a week, right. 10 days. You might yeah, be able to yeah. make some sketches or something, yeah. you know, but. Yeah, for sure. I, I mean, it takes a while to get the, the engine going. I, I mean, I think a week still would have been great. Yeah. I yeah. I would have really liked it, but, yeah. but two months is a, a, a different sort of animal yeah definitely so you think that your work just really kind of like exploded as far as um really experimental process yeah. and yeah I, I developed a lot of new processes here awesome that i had never yeah because <laughs> yeah. I, I bought i'd i'd bought new materials before i came here and i didn't know what was going to happen with them even if i was going to like using them uh-huh like using the yupo and yeah. charcoal and different things. So. so tell me like one thing that you think that you've discovered that you're going to implement more often. Like what was like one yeah. of those like fun discoveries? Uh, <laughs> the, the biggest one for me um, was, um, it's, it's actually the, the book here. The, which book? The one here. that my cut is yeah. on. <laughs> <laughs> was, I guess it was... Um, I'd gotten a PDF of it, and then uh -huh. here, and I, but it was like important, so I, I got the, the 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 old version of it, mm -hmm. 1968. But um, basically, this book just kind of talks about oh yeah um, how um, paintings use like mathematics, the, proportion. the proportions. Okay. These mm -hmm. are like the Botticelli uses these musical. Oh, kind of harmonic proportions. Which kind of blend everything. brings in your music interest yeah. into yeah, it, yeah, too. Yeah, yeah. I think yeah, they're, they're, they're really very similar, um, for sure. And so, it, like, and so just kind of, like, I, I started using, like, kind of borrowing some of their <laughs> compositions to use. Because, like, I mean, Botticelli uses this, but Raphael was also using it. And then mm -hmm. Caravaggio took from them. And then, mm -hmm. then and it continues to like Cezanne and Degas, mm -hmm. like they're all doing these sort of things that a lot of people aren't aware of the fact that it's not just how the artist feels a right. lot of times. It's they're they're using right. um, mathematics to create these harmonies in their paintings, mm -hmm. um, and it, it, it's it's similar it's similar with like color. I, I knew a little bit about color theory. I knew that there's like ways that the colors interact. Um, mm -hmm a lot like music you know right um, it's not as it's part of the systematized but but yeah um and so learning that about composition was kind of big for me because mm -hmm. i can like have um a structure um that i either borrow or kind of mm -hmm. improvise on something and that gives me kind of like space for like chaos yeah <laughs> like, like it, it at least gives me confidence when i'm making like a chaotic piece. yeah that there's <laughs> but, like an underlying yeah. frame to it almost yeah yeah because because some of the because i started on some different abstract mm -hmm. ones i'm gonna just yeah. look at these while you're talking yeah i started yeah. on some different abstract ones when i was here and and i, and I wasn't using um any sort of structure and it just didn't really quite feel right i didn't know but that's okay it was, was still kind of like yeah but i got the process figuring out the process yeah um yeah. and then i started as you can see here really using the lines and just um yeah just putting things at different points in the composition I'll move my tea over so i don't knock it yeah <laughs> okay i'm gonna stand up on this okay <laughs> Okay, you want to, that that way I can see everything. Yeah. Cool. All right. So, um, so these have similar frame the foundation lines that you're using. These do. Yeah, yeah. Like this one. Mm -hmm. um, this one's kind of a combination. Uh, so I, I used um, the kind of it's used in a lot of a lot of paintings throughout history. It's mm -hmm. just a, a kind of basic 
he calls it the armature of the rectangle. Mm -hmm. um, you just kind of take like the over the, the size of the comp of the of the canvas basically, mm -hmm. and then you you draw lines going across it. Uh, but I also combined that because um, like in the past I've used um, mandalas in my mm -hmm. work, mm -hmm. and so using this different this different book here, um, nice. I I. I use this structure because you often don't see like yeah like that in a lot of western arts so i, mm -hmm. I put that in there and kind of combined the two together so you're blending those traditions yeah okay um and then you're experimenting with different paper mm -hmm. and the yupo you said that you had read an article or something about it <laughs> yeah I, I, I can't <laughs> quite remember where i discovered it yeah uh, but then i did just do some research and was like this sounds this seems cool and like, did you have to order it Buy like a lot of sheets, or buy the sheet, or pack, or you can yeah, you can do any of that. Um, okay, depending on like what website you go through. I, I just bought like a pack all, all this size. Okay, um, and then also some transparent. Mm, yeah, nice, paper. nice. Uh, yeah, this is the same same as this, but I pasted watercolor paper mm -hmm. to it here, and then mm -hmm. let the drips of the acrylic ink and India ink. Yeah, and that's when you said the power went out from that crazy yeah. storm. Yeah, so I'm like, <laughs> I'm like working on it, yeah, doing like the final little black uh -huh. piece on it, and I'm like not really sure when to stop, and then the power just. <laughs> well, <laughs> you know, we'll tornado. we'll get yeah, and uh, that was there was literally a tornado yeah. like ten miles away, I think. Yeah. So that's kind of poetic in a way you yeah. know so like the like, tornado painting stop <laughs> <laughs> <You're done. laughs> let it dry it's dark yeah it's great yeah. <laughs> and this one you said you if you do that again you might change the material that you're using yeah cause yeah. I, yeah as you can see it it because the um a different absorbency or whatever absorbency and yeah. the watercolor paper reacts to humidity in a very different way mm -hmm. um so it'll always be kind of like yeah attracting Whereas the Yupo is very inert, and so it warps a lot. Yeah, <laughs> so that's difficult great. difficult to get them. Yeah. Well, uh, I'll refer back to Jeremy again, because, like, so he was here during the summer in mm -hmm. the in the in this tent outside in the dark doing photograms, right? <laughs> awesome. And then he would develop them, and it's like these little dots were his sweat, right? Okay. So it's like <laughs> experimental things, <laughs> right. but it's like, oh, that's really cool yeah, that like that, that happened, that, right? Because it's just like this random thing. element. So yeah, experimenting yeah. with form. And if you didn't have the time because you were only working a couple hours a, a week or something on your work, you might yeah. not have come to that, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It takes, yeah. It takes a lot of experimentation. Yeah. Figuring stuff out. And, and work. yeah. And then I remember in the other conversation we had, either on film or not, mm -hmm. uh, you were talking about the difference between oil painting. Mm -hmm. And Chow was like, because he was here mm -hmm. and he was building up layers. Yeah. So this piece was what you were working on at that time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and using the paper to build up layers. But there's a mm -hmm. big difference between this and mm -hmm. these. Yeah. So. Yeah. Are you still working on that kind of like building up layers um, on these? Yeah, yeah, for sure. And I, mm -hmm. I, I, I want to do more of that. Um, okay, let's look at the ones that are not monochromatic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow, look at that. Oh my gosh. You were working on that the other day. Yeah. Nice. Um, yeah, this one, I, it, it's very, <laughs> it's very similar to this one. Yeah. Um, in that um, it, it uses the mandala mm -hmm. structure mm -hmm. around it. Um, and I'd, because um, this face is actually from an, an AI chose like the most beautiful faces or whatever, but it was like based on symmetry, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. And so this was one of those faces from that. And I just kind of like on a lark, like superimposed it on the mandala and I don't know if this is like what people were thinking about when they were making mandalas, but it like fits uh, pretty much perfectly at these different <laughs> points. Like Maybe. the eyes huh. are exactly at the edge of this really? circle. And the nose ends at the bottom of this circle. The mouth at this intersection here. What? The chin at the bottom of this circle. Yeah, very strange. I was like... What? <laughs> yeah. Uh, and I, okay. I, 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 think, I think that that is like... 
part of why these proportions exist. I think it's probably, I don't right. have any evidence really, but maybe I could find some, but I, I think it's based on human proportions. Yeah. Um, or the fact that we are like rotating at a certain, you know, we're like this yeah. on a planet that is certain <laughs> speed and gravity and all yeah, that kind of stuff, knows? right? That it's yeah. like, <laughs> <laughs> the, the proportions... Like the golden spiral, the golden yeah, mean, yeah, like yeah. all of that relates. Mm -hmm. So it's interesting that you have the Eastern Western mm -hmm. kind of thing yeah. here. And I did like mandalas yeah. usually stop here. Right? Okay. Um, there's just a circle, but mm -hmm. I did um, put this on a golden ratio. Okay. With, with nice. There. Interesting. Um, but. Hmm. Now, how was it working? Um, kind of what was your works? Because originally you wanted more like, quote unquote, traditional studio. And then it got a little bit cold. <laughs> and there was one other person coming. So you were very polite and mm -hmm. not wanting to intrude mm -hmm. in someone else's space. Mm -hmm. And just with the temperature and everything, it ended up both of you guys were working in here together. Yeah. And you work flat. Yeah. So you work on the ground a lot. Yeah. Um, and then you discovered that I had this drafting table. Um, <laughs> yeah. So that helped a lot. So tell me a little bit about your kind of um, the physical process of what you're doing. Yeah. Um, and the space, because you're outside sometimes. and Yeah. With, with these new ones, um, with, the, with these kinds, I, I definitely like working outside. I like that, ta that table ta out there. Mm -hmm. um, just because I can like stand over it, it's flat because it has to mm -hmm. dry. Because it's all it, on the UPO, it doesn't dry very fast, so it has to kind of float on the paper. Mm -hmm. um, but then I'll also, so I'll be doing all that on the flat surface, and then I'll usually walk with it down to the grass to mm -hmm. get these uh, drips. The drips going oh. down. It, um, mm. Which. Uh, yeah, they kind of like bounce off the wax mm -hmm. pastel and do different things. And that's a lot, a lot of the process is like um, building it up, putting a lot of color and, and things on there, and then removing a lot of that, mm -hmm. right? Um, mm -hmm. Just and, and, and actually, I think like, like the removal is like maybe more important a lot, a lot of times. Mm -hmm. Lots of times I can be very just like slinging paint around for, mm -hmm. <laughs> for putting it on there. And then the removal is what, what it really like winds mm -hmm. up looking like. Mm -hmm. um, but for this one, I started just because um, you never have impasto with watercolor really. Okay. But I was taking um, just straight from the tube. Just mm. Oh, yeah. I think I there. remember you were. Yeah. Doing that. yeah. <laughs> Using my cheap watercolors for, for yeah. that. Yeah. Because um, you normally don't do that with watercolor. Um, and that allowed, because with Yupo, I don't have much control. Really, right. Because it floats over. And with watercolor, usually if there's a lot of water on it, it's just going to float around. But mm -hmm. if I did it straight from the tube, uh -huh. um, I, mm -hmm. that was how I was able to build this face. Because okay. I could have more control because it wasn't moving everywhere. Nice. Yeah. Very nice. Mm. <laughs> That's so interesting because this is, is this technically the last piece? Uh, no, I think this, this one is. Okay. Oh, yeah. You were working on that one the other day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that one was the last one. It's a little dark. <laughs> yes, it is a little dark. But that's okay. He's got plum, the wild violet flowers yeah. in the in the background <laughs> that I've been picking up from outside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. for sure. Yeah. yeah. But it also has the traditional, like, the, like, halo yeah. crown thing mm -hmm. going on. Mm -hmm. Is this finished? Do you have more to do? Um, yeah, it's done. Okay. <laughs> I don't think it's going to have yeah. to. I, I, could, I mean, I could work on it forever, but. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but I think it's. Nice. Done, right. as, it's, done as it's going to be. Awesome. Yeah, similar uh, process to that mm -hmm. one. Um, but yeah, I yeah. mean, and I'm still working on um, a lot of the the kind of like like this this side of like traditional watercolors mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. it just takes longer <laughs> yeah <laughs> these, these yeah ones i can do one in like a day right um, right i've been working on can you turn this one around since i'm standing yeah, over sorry. it that's okay 
Yeah. Oh, yeah, there's not much. Oh, yeah. Okay. I, I, can change that. I don't know if this is getting too long. <laughs> no, we're good. We're good. Um, oh, yeah. So, yeah. So, this one is the layers of the paper. And what yeah. was what was your intent on that? Um. So, I guess it... With this one, I wanted to do the... Um, so, this is Raphael's... Um, based off Raphael's... Uh, painting, but mm -hmm. I, I, I wanted it to be kind of like deconstructed and without mm -hmm. the like historical context mm -hmm. to be kind of like fractured in a lot of yeah. these different ways and also be like kind of melting looking. Mm -hmm. And so the um, ripping the paper was kind of like uh, a part of that, mm -hmm. that um, fractured nature of it, like, kind of like a break in it. Mm -hmm. um, and I also think it kind of like with all of those old Renaissance paintings, you have like cracks in it. I, oh yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I, I think that's. Yeah. Uh, can you imagine the Sistine Chapel without the cracks? In the <laughs> right, like, it wouldn't be the same. That's such an important uh, like, aspect of it. That's like the wabi sabi of it. <laughs> yeah, right? yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think it's aesthetically pleasing the way, the way that they, the way it tears. Because no matter how perfect you want to make something, yeah. nature and time impedes on it. Right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, the, yeah. I mean, nothing lasts forever. <laughs> yeah, interesting. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. And what's underneath those? Um, Is there something? Well, which way do you want to go? You go over there. Let's see. Um. Uh, Ooh. Let's see. I think this way. This one, you can kind of. I, I wanted to show this one just because you can kind of see the process a little bit. Yeah. Oh um, yeah, the transparency. Of it. So, um, do we need light for this one? Let's see. That's a little bit better. Yeah. So this one, um, the I'd done a, a smaller watercolor painting off this idea, and it's um, there's this painting M Manet's Luncheon on the Grass, mm -hmm. which. You can see the composition. I did it in charcoal mm. here. Mm -hmm. So you have these um, mm. yep. figures, you know, lunching on the grass, right? Right. <laughs> um, and uh, but what, I, what I think is interesting about this piece is that he borrowed these figures from Raphael. Okay. Okay. And then after he made this, Picasso came and did like hundreds of paintings after it. There's, there's a Monet version of Luncheon on the Grass. So there's just all these different, it's, it's like a lot of plagiarism. Almost, appropriating. Like, appropriating yeah. this thing. And so uh, I, I think I'm going to redo this one. But um, but I wanted the idea to just kind of like be a very blurry mass of like all of those things coming together. Mm -hmm. like, um, kind of in conjunction of the different pieces. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, and, and I, I kind of like traced out his composition here. Mm -hmm. and I, mm -hmm. I felt a little crazy because I was drawing these <laughs> lines here, these two, because they're like marked by the trees, okay, uh -huh. in his painting. I, this isn't from the book. I had to like figure yeah. out his composition. And as I'm drawing these lines, there's these two rocks right here. What? And he put these rocks like exactly on these composition lines, and it's like, it's so deliberate. I was like, ah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, when you think about like that, the masters and the fine art. When you're yeah. like an observer in a museum, and you only have a few minutes, and you're like, yeah. <laughs> you know, there's so many, right? Yeah. Do you really even notice that, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And... You just think, oh, he put some rocks there. <laughs> yeah. Just felt like putting rocks there. Why not? Why not put some rocks at the bottom of this painting? <laughs> <laughs> Oh yeah, that's but, funny. But yeah, I I, I, I like this one, but I, I yeah. want to do one more in like this um, uh -huh. this style, and I want to include kind of like figures from Raphael, Manet, Picasso, mm -hmm. um, in this kind of uh, conglomeration, and also include some of my own like stuff in it. Yeah, kind of like a interesting jumble. Interesting, but then there's like a face. So yeah, you're still <laughs> just exercising those muscles, right? Yeah, yeah, of yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I still um, am working on yeah. shading and facial 
features mm -hmm. and, and that kind yeah. of thing. I, yeah, I need to figure out what to do with that one. <laughs> <laughs> the juxtaposition between those yeah. is really interesting, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. So you have some of your tools over there. Mm -hmm. And... Um, Bring the inks over there. Oh, yeah, the inks. Yeah, and we, I guess we talked last time about the. <laughs> the, the it, those pencil, those the, like statty things. Yeah, just the, the, the bamboo. Uh, yeah, you said you got that on a plane one time? Oh, no. These ones are from your bamboo garden. Oh, yeah, I know, but the other one. The other, the other one that you purchased. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You took that on a plane. <laughs> oh. <laughs> right. Yeah, so the bamboo ones, have you used those? The ones that you made? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I use these for the... Um, I mean, you can see I use it for the acrylic. Okay. Like, stains yeah. it, and I just Fun. push push things around on the... On mm -hmm. the Fun. Um, That's and, great. Cool. So what is next? You're packing up. It's been two yeah. months. <laughs> um, yeah. Get down off this I've, table. Yeah. I mean, being here, I've had like more ideas for paintings than mm -hmm. I've had like than my hand can move. Yeah. <laughs> like, I haven't been able to, like, but it, it's been great because I've just like some mornings I'll, I'll just come up with another like idea for mm -hmm. for some sort of painting. So so I've got like a backlog of things I want to work on. Nice. Um, a lot of it. Yeah, I want I want to keep doing these sort of things, but I do want to mm -hmm. you know have some more balance between them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like right yeah. now, I'm working on. Um... Oh wow! This one, which it's like, um, it's yeah. from. It's very similar to that one I was talking about that I did in college because it's yeah. based off a, a Last Judgment painting mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, by Pontormo, which was actually because. A lot of the man the manners came after the Renaissance, and mm -hmm. people didn't. They were like, "Oh, it's not Raphael." So they right. kind of like so this this work. It, there's only sketches. Mm -hmm. The actual work was lost, and so I'm kind of like combining it with this kind of like mandala with like a void in it to kind of mm -hmm. show how that whole thing was like just lost, lost, yeah, mm -hmm. black hole so, thing. Um, yeah, but I am I'm thinking about because I did the rips in it again. I'm thinking mm -hmm. about moving this down having more paper here kind of like going yeah both directions with the rips I did. yeah <laughs> this is maybe a little strange. this <laughs> this was actually the, the me designing how the rips are gonna go yeah it's a little... <laughs> <laughs> that's fun because it like looks like the curtains yeah <laughs> <laughs> fabric design there yeah. <laughs> It would have been yeah. easy for me to just forget it because it's just white here. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, that's fun. That's fun. Yeah. But you're about to enter a different space for three or four months of, of mm -hmm. a different time schedule. Yeah. Um, do you think that this will be part of your process of like working and then breaks and working and then breaks? And then mm -hmm. do you find that like this immersion kind of thing works better for you than like a daily, like at some point getting that? Getting it to be like doing this all the time, yeah, right? of course, would be great. Yeah, that would be, that, that's the dream. That's the ideal. Yeah, just to do, yes, yeah, to do that all the time. Yeah. Um, but yeah, for the next few months, because I'll, I'll be, I'll be teaching online at night. So yeah. ho hopefully, in the morning, I'll be able to, to paint, to work on something, and keep a and routine, keep a routine going. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Um, yeah. Then teach it at night, then go back to it. Awesome. So besides the workspace and all of the things that you've been doing and going outside, mm -hmm. do, we should probably just, it'd be easier to sit yeah. again. <laughs> um, is there anything else that you, your takeaway? Because I remember that you really wanted to be kind of like in nature and yeah. what are some of the other things that were, you'll I mean, think about? I mean, yeah, just, I mean, and another, another part of it was I just, I just feel like in a mentally better space, just being able to, you know, in the afternoon, just going for a walk down mm -hmm. by the river and sitting and reading or, mm -hmm. you know, going and seeing the donkeys or yeah. bear. Going yeah. <laughs> Cutting bamboo down. Cutting bamboo down. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. I think all those activities, um, were just good for my mental space and, um, yeah, kind of relaxing and, yeah 
bled into a lot of the stuff, mm-hmm. even though it looks very chaotic. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, but I mean, I've heard other artists talk about it. like you need a kind of very like calm space mm-hmm. in order for some sort of like wildness to happen in your art. Like, mm-hmm. I, mean, I mean, some people can thrive in like a chaotic life environment to making art, but I, I think if, if your life is calm, then you can make, you know. Yeah. Yeah, and I would see you sometimes playing your mandolin, yeah. and then sometimes you were reading, and mm-hmm. and um, it's interesting that there's a musical kind of mm-hmm. reference mm-hmm. with some of these inspirations, and I think yeah. that for you in particular, but other artists like being having your brain switch between this mode and then a musical mode and then a literary mm-hmm. it yeah. all kind of connects in an interesting way i i mean for sure and and a, and a lot of a lot of these of my recent paintings have been really based on like literature poetry that i've been mm-hmm. i've been reading like um like uh oh i did what well, one so you saw me drawing, no, okay. uh, you saw me drawing eyes <laughs> yeah <laughs> like, yeah like eyes which um it was just going to be a sketch but it actually turned into something i really like uh, but this is, um, you know, since you're talking about literature, mm-hmm. uh, I was reading Ovid's Metamorphoses, and this is uh, one of the Roman, or like a Greco-Roman myths of mm-hmm. Mercury slaying Argus. Mm-hmm. Uh, and um, yeah, it's just I was just listening to it. I was like, oh, I can do this, <laughs> do this thing. <laughs> uh, and I kind of, I bet I've been, I drew like a few other literary references. Like there's this John Updike quote about the the universe being un, unsleeping. Like mm-hmm. so, when you die, you're just always awake. It's kind of terrifying to me. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, this, so that's what this is. Kind yeah, of? this this guy Argus. He has hundreds of eyes, and he is watching. Um, well, right, because isn't that like what a ghost is like? There, like, right. a, like the consciousness is always there, yeah, yeah, and yeah. always like in a certain time or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a different, it's a different embodiment than a human form. It's just energy. Yeah, yeah, I guess, yeah. yeah. It's that idea exactly. Um, yeah. And um, so, in in the in Ovid's Metamorphoses, um, Jupiter wants Argus killed because he's like watchful of something that he doesn't like and. Mm-hmm. And the, and so Mercury says like that his hundred eyes something something about how they're they're in night now like it's mm-hmm. you know it's all but but I, but this is I was painting it after after that scene but the, his eyes are still like open mm. um. <laughs> <laughs> that poetry book that I showed you the other day that yeah. the the student I was working with selected. Mm-hmm. I think you might find that yeah. interesting because it's it deals with, it's called, it's all about the night and mm. darkness and yeah. there's some alcoholism and stuff in there, but um, yeah, you, you might find that it connects in an interesting way. It's a Spanish translated into, mm-hmm. you know, English, but cool. it's all about the, the space between okay. and the darkness of the night, but only certain people can find this like space between time almost and Mm. i think it was the poet's like depth into kind of alcoholism or something but the way that he was it was yeah Yeah. maybe i'll let you borrow it yeah (laughs) yeah because you said you're definitely you might come back someday (laughs) (laughs) and you're you live about like five out right now you live like five hours away so yeah yeah, that's awesome (laughs) and i i'm seeing i'm seeing little pieces of art all over yeah. the place. How was it in a? How was it being in a space that is filled with lots of color and lots of art? That's mm. it's yeah. not yours necessarily. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, I mean for sure. I, I, I mean, just looking at these things every day, I'm sure had an influence on okay. this stuff. Yeah, and and I, I mean, I I was I definitely look some of your books here. Yeah, I, I look through your book on the Louvre. I was, I was flipping through all the time. Cool. That one was pretty inspirational for a few different things i was working on so, great yeah that was great great uh, yeah it's a good space to... awesome because <laughs> you you all since you're surrounded by it you're, you're just 
just kind of thinking of, I don't know. It's just right, crazy. right. Like normal, normal people might be like, whoa, my house is not going to be, you know, like I like white walls and right. like one piece of art or something. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, I wanted it to be really fun and, and, and immersive in the same, you know, and, and calm too. Mm-hmm. So we were talking about like, uh, crazy dreams and mm-hmm. sleeping and having art dreams and things yeah. like that. Yeah. yeah. A lot of those. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Um, so I think that when I first, like the first day or two that I met you, you were talking about applying for grad school yeah. and, or just developing a portfolio. Do mm-hmm. you feel like you're on that path better yeah. now? Yeah. For, yeah. hundred percent. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cause, Great. cause I mean, just, just conceptually, I feel like I have, more of a grounding for my work now than yeah I before i got here um I f- yeah i feel like i'm better able to talk about i feel like there's just more to talk about with, mm-hmm. with what i've been working on than what i was working on in the past yeah right. so in that regard how do you feel about kind of the first residency and this this thing that you decided to do mm-hmm. now that you're getting ready to pack up and go yeah it's been awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's really great. Yeah, awesome. Life changing. Yeah. Very cool. Cool. <laughs> so, well, yeah. it's been amazing hosting you and Thanks. just all the other people that have been here. And yeah, it's, it's, it's been just, nice meeting everyone. Yeah. 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 yeah Cause I, I mean, I learned a lot also like talking to everyone. Yeah. So, yeah I like talking with Chow all the time. Um, Hannah, Brian, just different mm-hmm. artists that came through. We had a lot to share and discuss. Yeah. And, yeah cool I think that that's, experience. that's great. Is it, yeah. it's kind of, that was, that's a goal, right? That's, that's yeah. kind of like building this kind of bubbling place of people interacting, which is different than grad school. Cause I feel mm-hmm. like when my experience in grad school was very isolating mm. because you're for me personally, I was like really in my space yeah. and maybe one or two classes there would be interaction mm. with people or like a group critique or something, but it was very myopic, very mm. for me personally, my experience yeah. was very blinders and yeah. everyone else in my, there was a small program, but everyone else in my program was working on different things and people had, cause everyone was not 22, right? We were older and Mm -hmm. which I think is good for grad school to not be like, you know, undergrad to grad school, especially for art. Right. Um, So I feel like a lot of people kind of had their own lives and, and there wasn't a lot of interaction as much as what I've seen happen in the last few weeks here, you know, (laughs) Um, maybe it's the pressure too of like, um, you know, because grad school was not only, you know, the one thing that you're doing, but it's all the other classes you're in and maybe you're teaching a class or something. So it was definitely like a work kind of mode. Also, I I mean, in, in grad school, well, in grad school, you're in a city where everyone has their own friend groups and things like that. When you're out here, like it's it's just us. It's out just here. us. <laughs> you know? Us and the donkeys yeah. so, and like, the campfire and yeah. yeah. Which is which is great, you know. To yeah. Kind of shut off everything else. Right. Around that you're just with the people that are right. here. And like, right. Even though Chow like called his wife every day, yeah. whatever, right? Yeah. But it's not like that distraction, like I have to go home to yeah. That and you're only, you know, around yeah. someone a few hours a day. So, mm-hmm. yeah, that's really great. It's good feedback. Mm-hmm. Um, well, I just I just think that I can see a difference in your work. And I think it's smart to have at least two months of the time if someone can, you know, make yeah, it happen. I recommend it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's possible in someone's life. Well, I'm excited to see what's next for you. And I just want to thank you so much yeah, for, thank you for everything. So, thank yeah. You as well. It's awesome. awesome. <laughs> All right.